Hello guys and welcome to Investor. This is a channel where we'll discuss stocks, uh, strategies and everything investing related. Uh, so let's get started. In our first video, we'll talk about the music industry and Sade Gama's place in it. Uh, we'll discuss the business model, why we like it and what the future could look like. Now Sade Gama has four business segments, uh, music licensing, Kalva, UD Films, Sun TV. Uh, we'll discuss all of them, but what we are most interested in is the music licensing business. And we'll see why. Now, Sade Gama is a beneficiary of this global consumption boom, and music streaming is a part of that. Uh, to understand this better, we need to understand the evolution of music over the last two decades. So, let's go back to the year 2000. Now, this is when free digital downloads started gaining popularity and music piracy became a real problem for the industry. Uh, cassette and CD sales started declining, people were getting laid off, a lot of music labels went bankrupt. And for a very long time, uh, these guys were struggling to figure out how to monetize content. Uh, but over the last seven years, as you can see in this chart, the popularity of music streaming services like Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music uh, has really gone up and along with it, the revenues have picked up. Uh, what's missing in this chart uh, is that last year's revenue grew by almost 20% to 13.4 billion US. So how this typically works is that these streaming apps get ad and subscription revenue which they share with the music labels and the artist. Uh, we'll talk about streaming a bit more later, but first let's understand how music labels like Sade Gama make money in all of this. So Sade Gama is sitting on 1.3 lakh songs where they own the music rights. Now they license these songs to music streaming apps uh, that we just talked about uh, but they also license them to social media platforms, video streaming platforms, uh, there are movies and shows that use Sade Gama songs, there are brands that use them for ads, uh, events where the songs get placed uh, and in all of these cases Sade Gama gets paid and they have different deals with most of these guys. Uh, for example, uh, Spotify pays them 10 pesa every time a song is streamed plus ad revenue plus subscription revenue. Uh, YouTube they have their own channels which are going very fast. Uh, they get ad revenue from them uh, about 55%. Uh, so the deals vary but the key thing to understand here is that the more you listen to the music the more money they make. Now there's something interesting that one should think about. Uh, so at a very basic level, we all understand that revenue minus cost is profit. But what if there's no cost? That's what's happening here with the old music. So once Sade Gama acquires a song, the cost is amortized over the next six years. Uh, to put it simply, after six years, there's no cost on the income statement. But this song can generate revenue for a very very long time. Uh, for example, they have a lot of retro music. Uh, these are songs from the 60s, 70s, uh, R.D. Berman, you know, Kishore Kumar type of songs that are still bringing them money. So this uh, is an asset light high ROC cash throwing machine and this cash is reinvested to acquire new music. So every song has the potential to provide non-linear growth if it becomes popular. So last year the music licensing revenue grew by 20% and within that the music streaming part grew at 40%. Now going forward management expects to grow at 22-25%. So now that we understand how Sade Gama makes money, let's talk a bit more on streaming to understand the growth drivers here. 
so streaming has changed the way we consume music uh, in the old days you would buy entire cd to listen to just one song today we have playlists with songs we want to listen to uh, what this does is increase the play time of songs due to ease of access and what's helping further is cheap data longer travel time and faster smartphone adoption in india uh, one more thing to uh, understand here is that music has high repeatability meaning if you like a song you can listen to it a thousand times thereby making companies like saregama richer uh, but most products in our day to day life have limited repeatability uh, you'll buy a car or a fridge or a tv only once in 5 10 years uh, one more thing is that uh, unlike earlier in the old days there's no manufacturing expenses anymore you know no one's making cds or cassettes so all these factors are really uh, helping the earnings growth now this is a major growth trigger and i feel that this is something that a lot of people on the street haven't taken into account now india has 200 million active users on these music streaming platforms right gana saavn spotify and others out of which only 1% are paid subscribers now look at the number of paid subscribers globally close to 450 million almost half the listeners on spotify are paid subscribers so as more and more listeners in india start converting into paid subscribers revenues are going to see a major boost one thing to know that uh, there has been a lot of consolidation that's happened in the music industry uh, there are very few big players left uh, not just in india but globally right uh, in india you have your t series saregama tips Uh, now typically movie producers use music as a marketing tool uh, if people like the music they'll come watch the movie now with so many movies coming on platforms like netflix hotstar amazon uh, it's now more important than ever to work with companies like saregama who have the ability to promote the music so the entry barriers in this industry are high uh, you have to have a huge library of songs uh, like saregama has to attract uh, the music creators and very few players have it right um, and here going forward management has indicated that they want to acquire 20 to about 25% of all new film music uh, they are also investing a lot in regional music um, because that's a relatively untapped market uh, and they're doing very well uh, especially in bhojpuri and bhoj gujarati uh, you can see the youtube channel and you'll get a fair idea of uh, what i'm talking about here now for those of you who don't know what scarva is uh, kalva is a product and a category in itself um, it has about 5000 preloaded songs and it's mainly targeted at middle aged people and uh, management in the con calls has often credited kalva for reviving this popularity of retro music um, so they were selling kalva mostly in metros like the top 10 cities and then they decided to sell it nationwide and here unfortunately for them there was an economic slowdown uh then there was covid uh so they had problems here uh but management seems pretty motivated to make this a success uh and we like the strategy here because going for they want to transition from a product to a platform uh meaning the new kalva has wifi streaming podcast and they're hopeful that once enough people have this kalva they can generate ad and subscription revenue based on these podcast uh, podcast listeners so uh, but yeah this however will take time so let's see how this pans out 
Now, Udly Films makes low-budget movies that are content-focused and not star-focused. Uh, over the last four years, they have launched 16 movies. Uh, the way this works is that they license these movies to say Netflix or Amazon or Hotstar for a fixed fee for three years or say five years or ten years. And some of the movies like Chaman Bahar, uh, Ahmed, uh, Akoni, uh, these are some of the movies that have done quite well for themselves. Uh, management wants to launch 50 new films and web series in the next three years and in fact uh, they're launching the first web series this year uh, one point that i do want to highlight about the movie industry is that uh, it's similar to real estate um, in the sense that these industries both these industries uh, lack organized players with professionally run management and uh, I think that's what separates Udly from the rest. Uh, now, having personally worked in the movie business, I can tell you that most films frequently overshoot their budget and are rarely completed on time. Uh, now, for reasons beyond the scope of this video, uh, all I can say is that it's difficult for big studios to make movies uh, with such cost controls as Udly does. So here Saregama has created about 6,000 6, hours of content for Sun TV over the last 20 years. Uh, so this is a legacy business. Uh, they have about three serials currently. Uh, they get advertising slots which they can sell. Uh, but the good thing even here is that the management has uh, found a way to monetize this better. So the old uh, shows they run on the YouTube channel and if you can uh, go to the YouTube channel you'll see that these have been generating a lot of views a lot of views means a lot of ad revenues so that's something that uh, they have done here which we like so it all sounds good uh, but what are the risks so a lot of this licensing revenue has come from retro music and that's something that's been quite popular lately. Uh, a lot of ads, a lot of TV shows, a lot of movies are using retro music. Now, how long that continues is anybody's guess. So a lot depends on Saregama's ability to acquire new music uh, that they can monetize. Uh, secondly, cost of content could go up. Uh, artists and producers uh, seeing Saregama's success might wanna uh, might want more money they could demand more money in the future also spotify or youtube uh, might wanna keep a bigger chunk of ad revenues a lot of artists might wanna work directly with spotify so these are some real threats that one needs to monitor um, competition in regional music from t series is not a current set because we feel like there's ample room to grow in the regional uh, music business and plus uh, T series is more focused on Punjabi and Hindi however Saregama is mostly focused on Bhojpuri and Gujarati uh, but still this is again a monitorable we do need to see that so having said all that we still feel that the Saregama story is still in its early days. Uh, now a lot of people might not want to believe it uh, because the stock has gone up 9x in one year. So it's natural that a lot of people are in disbelief. Uh, but instead of anchoring to the price, we believe that as an investor, it helps to look at the business, understand it better and ask yourself if it's worth buying at current levels. Uh, now we obviously are invested in bias, uh, so there's that. Uh, but uh, but we do expect that the earnings should compound at 25% for the foreseeable future, uh, unless there's a major disruption in the way we consume content today. Now due to time constraint, we have left out a lot of things, including financials, uh, valuations, so do let us know if you want us to include that in our future videos. 
uh, also please do your own research because uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot more to business analysis than what we just showcased here uh, thank you for watching uh, do comment if you have any questions and we'll see you next week thank you